Hi and welcome to Celtic History Decoded. I hope you're well. So unfortunately over the last week or so, I broke my wrist. So I can't travel or drive at the minute. But I'm now interested in kind of making the most out of a bad situation and silver linings and all that. I want to start a series, or I have wanted to start a series, on reviewing kind of Scottish and historical movies in general. And I thought this was a great opportunity to start this series, as I can't really do anything else at the minute. So today, I'm going to review The Outlaw King, a film that came out a couple of years ago on Netflix. So what is The Outlaw King about, you may ask? Well, I'm sure many of you have actually seen the movie, but the kind of one-liner on IMDb was a true David versus Goliath story of how the 14th century Scottish outlaw king, Robert the Bruce, used cunning and bravery to defeat the much larger and better equipped occupying English army. So just to be clear, there will be some spoilers in this video, particularly as we progress through the video. Fun fact, Outlaw King is actually the scene of one of the longest winners in cinematic history. It's at the start of the movie and I think it's about 9 minutes long or something. It's incredible. So by one or I mean like a single continuous take tracking shot uh, with no cuts and no visible cuts. And I do think that it was one shot. It's not just kind of like good editing like, you know, I don't know if anyone saw the film 1917. Phenomenal film. Um, and I think, you know, the, the cinematography and stuff in that film is incredible. But that's kind of shot to look like a one-off, but I think there is about seven or eight cuts in that, but obviously still long takes throughout. But anyway, in, the, in this one, is about an eight, nine minute scene. At the very start of the movie, um, it starts with Bruce kind of pledging allegiance um, to, to Edward Longshanks, the King of England. And then it goes through the kind of nobility of Scotland pledging allegiance because at this point in the Scottish War of Independence, um, lots you lots of kind of Scottish nobles uh, had kind of given in the fight at that period and pledged allegiance, and there was a wee bit of a, a kind of lull in um, rebellious activities at that point. But anyway, it starts on, on Robert the Bruce pledging, pledging allegiance, um, in the first part goes through the nobility. Then there's a sword fight between Edward the uh, Second, Edward Longshank's son, and Robert the. Bruce, um, which is quite incredible, and a one or a single take shot, the choreography and the kind of performance needs to be so spot on for that to be a, like a continuous nine minute shot, you know, you can't cut around mistakes, so then there's a, there's a sword scene, and then the one is finally ended with um, like a kind of giant catapult, flaming catapult scene, also in that, in that sequence it introduced, introduces James Douglas, um, who is kind of known as the Black Douglas, I think, later on, although there's a couple of people of that name in Scottish history. Um, but yeah, he, he became a kind of major commander uh, in Robert Bruce's army. Um, in the first Scottish War of Independence, he was kind of a major major figure on the military front as a military commander. Um, so in that opening one or that open eight, eight, nine minutes, so it's a really good way to set up that, that movie because it introduces him as well. Obviously, Robert the Bruce, um, some of the dynamics between the characters as well. Because I believe Robert the Bruce, he actually grew up or he spent time in the court in London when he was younger because he is from the ability, you know, he's not... You know, a, a standard kind of normal person um, who was low birth and, and didn't have a lot of wealth. He was of his high birth, was from nobility. He's, he was, he's, you know, the era of Carrick. Um, his father and grandfather had political power and political aspirations for king. Um, so, so, yeah, it's a good introduction uh, or way to set up the movie um, in that single shot sequence. And it really explores, sets up some of the dynamics, the personality dynamics between, you know, Robert the Bruce and Edward II, for instance, that then it goes on to kind of further explore um, in detail later on in the movie. So the director of the movie was David McKenzie. He's do, done other films like Hell or High Water, I think it's called, uh, with Jeff Bridges, which is meant to be really good. Um, like I say, some of the stars, Robert the Bruce is played by Chris Pine, does a pretty good job. Elizabeth de Borg is played by Florence Pugh, and then lots of other actors. Everyone acting in it, I think they've done well. I don't think there's anyone you would think particularly that didn't do, you know, very well. And it's quite an interesting time frame they do focus on in the film. It picks up in 1304. That's the opening kind of sequence. Um, I, I, I think it's a, a somewhat made up date, but roughly speaking, the timeline of the film is quite accurate and it is quite a good introduction um, to Robert the Bruce's life in general, particularly that period. So it focuses only from about 1304 
to 1307-1308. So it's about a four or five year period during the first Scottish War of Independence, which began in, in about 1295 or so. But it's basically, you can view it as, as almost like a second phase of the first Scottish War of Independence, um, especially in the rebellious phases. Because obviously William Wallace had r risen up and Andrew du Murray, who was kind of more a northern like rebellious leader, who then linked in with Wallace. Um, but that was about 1297, 1298. You know, you had the Battle of Stirling Bridge, which I think is 1297, and um, the Battle of Falkirk, where Wallace was defeated in 1298 or so. So it's basically it's after William Wallace, um, certainly after his rebellious phase, um, there is a kind of trigger point in the movie where Wallace was executed. Um, exactly whether that was actually a trigger point for Robert the Bruce is hard to say or not. But anyway, it picks up in about 1304. The opening shot is Robert the Bruce pledging, uh, pr pr God can't speak, pledging allegiance to the English king, uh, Longshanks, King Edward I. Um, so, so that's the opening sequence where you see Robert the Bruce basically because he is a, 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 from a political family, has political aspirations. Then it moves through to he marries Elizabeth de Burke, who's played by uh, Florence Pugh. Um, she does quite a good job as well, actually. Um, Elizabeth de Burke was the daughter of Richard de Burke, um, who was part of the kind of Lordship of Ireland, um, this kind of Norman clique, Anglo clique. Then essentially the trigger point in the movie for Bruce having questions about his allegiance to England was Wallace being killed um, or executed. But I don't necessarily think that's historically accurate at all. I don't think Wallace was necessarily the trigger point for Bruce um, to, to kind of rebel. Um, but anyway, in, in the film, and obviously for artistic purposes, um, they try and you know, simplify things sometimes, and obviously it's easier to do that. It's a good emotional trigger as well for the film. It obviously touches as well on Bruce killing John Common. Um, reasonable depiction of it. Obviously the, the dialogue between the two in the church and as far as I understand in the historical record we don't necessarily know what they said to each other. Um, I, I think basically Bruce is in the film anyway, Bruce you know obviously he wants to be king so I'm sure it's something to do with there were two two people that were competing for the Scottish crown um, and obviously the first Scottish War of Independence broke out because there was a succession crisis after Alexander III died. Um, Edward I came in and mediated for a bit uh, installed John Balliol for a period. He was considered a kind of weak king and, it, and then it goes on and on and on. But essentially the, there's always been a kind of power vacuum in Scotland or there has been a power vacuum in Scotland to do with the kingship for, for decades <coughs> prior to this really coming along. Bruce, obviously someone from a um, politically aspiring family. Um, his grandfather and his father had political aspirations for King. But anyway, it, it basically does a good job of going through Robert the Bruce's life and also showing the sacrifice that Robert the Bruce has to uh, endure during that period. Um, it does a good job of depicting how Bruce, who, who had numerous brothers, and um, many of them did actually you know, die during that period. Um, his wife and daughter were both captured f for years upon years. Um, and Bruce himself, you know, was on the run for a period, he was outlawed. So it's a really good introduction to the first Scottish War of Independence in general, if you want a kind of film, a more kind of Hollywood introduction as opposed to a pure documentary. Um, it's not obviously verbatim pure history, but the timeline particularly to do with Robert the Bruce's life is brilliant. Um, it's really good at giving you a good overview of that period. It um, goes for him kind of pledging allegiance to the English crown, to then kind of having doubts about that, to then having to kind of flee for a period after murdering John Common, which it does go through, um, to then coming back and kind of hit and, hit and run campaigns against English forces and English positions, um, Scotch Earth policy, which I think they did, and it does do quite a good job, the film, um, of showing him kind of burning castles, burning grounds, um, as they were kind of trying to take Scotland back castle by castle, land by land, farm by farm um, during that period. And then it finally builds um, to the Battle of Loudon Hill, which took place in about 1307, 1308, um, where Robert the Bruce Dud does um, beat an English force, much larger English force. Um, some of the kind of tactics that they explore in the movie is quite similar. Um, to, to the tactics they would have used. Um, anyway, they, they had to be quite strategic, and um, Bruce had to be quite strategic uh, at the Battle of Loudon Hill um, because England, much larger force, lots of cavalry, 
Um, so he did pick kind of a bog type environment. Um, and, and also I think there was a platform through the bog that meant that the English forces had to, you know, go on quite, not single file, but quite a narrow focus of the their force. So, so the fact they had so many different cavalry and so much more, so many troops, the fact that Bruce picked a bog, you know, they get they got weighed down whenever they tried to flank them either way. Um, so it basically obfuscated or reduced the impact of England having more more forces. Um, so it did quite a, did quite a good job of um, going through that that battle. Um, and and Bruce did win that. It was one of the major early kind of military victories. Um, obviously there was lots of hit, hit and run campaigns. Um, but this was a, a kind of military standing battle, if you will, uh, where Robert the Bruce won. Uh, and it was one, a major victory that then propelled him on. Um, and then it was about six years after that was the Battle of Bannock for Bannockburn. But yeah, it's a really fascinating time period they did pick. Um, I'm kind of glad they did pick that. Obviously, Braveheart, it's like so much kind of bells and whistles <laughs> in a sense. But, you know, high entertainment, good film, like it. Not really historically accurate. I think Outlaw King's probably more historically accurate, accurate than Braveheart. Um, particularly time timeline wise, there is some major issues with this the history of the film at certain points. Um, like say the discussion between Common and Bruce, we don't really know what they said, so there was definitely artistic license just kind of filling in the blanks. But we kind of have a general idea it was over a power struggle, and then obviously Bruce stabs Common. Probably the one point where it's the least historically accurate is at the Battle of Loudon Hill. Um, the, the way they set it up. Um, initially some of the kind of tactics used, the environment, the kind of bog-like environment that Bruce picked for the battle um, is quite accurate and obviously Scotland used that and Bruce used that to his advantage. Um, but there's a scene at the very end of the movie and obviously it's just a way to end the movie between Edward II, so Edward Longshank's son, um, Edward II, who was like the Prince of Wales and then went on to be a King of England after his dad died, and I believe that who that was who this this person is depicted. He he was apparently had like a one on one battle with Robert the Bruce at the Battle of Loudon Hill, which never happened. It's kind of like a quite ridiculous scene, quite good for entertainment purposes, but for historical purposes, it's just complete nonsense. So so at one point, basically Edward the Second and Robert the Bruce find themselves just like in a one on one environment, and then Robert the Bruce basically disarms them and defeats them. In, in any real environment, obviously, if that's your enemy, you would capture or capture him or kill him. It, it just like lets him go, like you know. See you later on. We'll just continue to fight this war for the next decade or two. So, so that part's just kind of nonsense. But I think it's just for the personality conflict that they kind of set up between the two, and um, between Robert the Bruce and King Edward the Second, Longshanks' son, throughout the film. It's kind of a way to tie that together and kind of make, you know, the English guy who's, you know, a bit of a prick, you know, just seem a wee bit inferior. And Robert the Bruce is obviously meant to be the hero of the story. So, you know, that, that obviously I understand why they do it. It's not pure Veritas history. It's just, you know, what, what they thought was a good story to kind of encapsulate and end of, um, you know, wrap up the movie at the end. Um, but, but yes, it's still a good scene. Like, well directed, well shot. Obviously, we need to do a rating. So out of five stars, I would give it 3.9. I don't think it's the best movie you ever see. Certainly not the worst movie you ever see. Somewhere in the middle. Um, I think it's quite slow in starting in some sense. Um, you know, I, I quite like Christopher Nolan. I always liked uh, Christopher Nolan, the, the director. Always liked this quote by some producer from the 1930s, 1940s, where he really liked movies that started with an earthquake and then built to a crescendo. This movie doesn't do that. It starts slow and then it gradually builds to a crescendo um, and ends in kind of loud, loud, loud and hill battle. Um, and that's obviously there's points of action and it is quite gripping, but it's quite kind of grounded compared to something like Braveheart. I would say it's definitely, if Braveheart's like a 10 on the dial of like Hollywood bells and whistles, this is like, you know, a six or a seven, which doesn't mean it's bad. Um, it just means it's, it's like the tone of it is a wee bit more kind of stoic, um, it's a wee bit more subdued, and it's more real. It's kind of, it's, I think, you know, the actors were in the wild a lot, they were filming outside a lot, um, and the kind of whole tone of it, even the dress and costumes, everything's, and even the grade of it, you know, the colour grade, it's, it's all, you know, it's not 
completely in your face like fast, fast and Furious or something. You know, it's much less subdued. But I think that's what it needs to be if you want to have a kind of relatively accurate historical film. You know, tonally it probably needed to be like that. Um, so, so yeah, but I'll give it 3.9 out of 5. Um, please let me know your rate, uh, rating in the comments below. I would be interested, interested to see if you've seen it. I think quite a lot of people probably have seen it. Um, I've saw it two or three, four times or so. I've saw it quite a few times now. Um, let me know what you would give it out of five. Um, 3.9 I would say is a solid. Five is like, you know, unattainable. So, you know, probably 4.5 is the highest anyway you could give a film. But anyway, um, yeah, 3.9, which is a solid, solid effort. And yeah, the acting's really good in general. Um, the directing's really good. Costume's good. Location is good. I don't know where it was filmed, but it looks like it's filmed in Scotland or maybe Ireland. Um, so quite the landscape looks like it should look type thing. Um, good locations in the wild a lot, which I liked. Outside a lot, which I liked, because obviously that kind of film, if they'd done it like green screen or whatever, it would just be an absolute disaster. Um, so they seem to be on location a lot, um, which is good. So yeah, definitely recommend it. If you've not seen it, I would say watch it. If you've not seen it for a while, I would say what, if you've already seen it type thing, I would definitely recommend it as well. So is The Outlaw King more historically accurate than Braveheart? Well, the short answer is probably yes. Both obviously, they're historically grounded and, you know, William Wallace was a real person, so Braveheart was accurate in that sense. Obviously, there's artistic license with all these things. They're movies, they're not documentaries. If you're writing a kind of screenplay for one of these things, you can obviously pick and choose what you want to use. Um, you can obviously speed up time, you can change timelines a wee bit, you can introduce characters or introduce dialogue to move a story along, even though it's not remotely historical, historically accurate. Um, so obviously I understand all that. Outlaw King though is quite accurate, I would say. Particularly like I probably said about five times already, timeline wise, like even not precisely, but just a general timeline of Robert the Bruce during that period. You know, initially pledging allegiance um, because he's, you know, a political kind of nobility, uh, noble who, who obviously understood, and he, apparently his dad and his grandfather, he understood sometimes, I suppose you need to toe the line, especially if you want, if you have political aspirations, um, and then he kind of rebels, then he goes into, not hiding, but, you know, he goes to Isla for a bit in the movie. I think he does kind of hop around some of the islands, lives quite low. He's obviously kind of excommunicated, excommunicated as well um, by the Vatican during that period because he stabs common. Uh, you know, that that's kind of in the movie. He does declare himself king, though, um, or he's appointed king uh, all around that point as well. Um, and then he comes back, kind of guerrilla war warfare tactics, Scotch Earth tactics, gradually rebels, you know, slowly, castle by castle, grows in numbers, and then the Battle of Loudon Hill, which is the, the finale of the movie, that is a real battle that took place. Like I was kind of saying earlier, um, the fight scene between Robert the Bruce and Edward the Second, um, the Prince of Wales, didn't happen, I don't think, I don't even think Edward the Second was at the Battle of Loudon Hill. Um, it was one of the kind of like noble general types or, or commander types. I think his name was Vance or Valance. Um, was one of the, the English leaders at that battle. Um, I don't even think Edward II was there. He may have been there. But there, there was definitely not a one-on-one -on -one battle between Edward II and Robert the Bruce at Loudon Hill. And Robert the Bruce just like let him go. You, you know, it just that would never happen. Um, so let us know if he was in the comments below if Edward II was at Loudon Hill, um, but I don't think he was. So yeah, good film from an entertainment perspective, but also from a historical perspective. Um, as far as a historical rating of how good, I'm going to give it 3.995 for an overall rating. Historical rating might be similar, to be honest. Maybe, maybe a 3.5. For historical accuracy, um, like I say, we don't really know what Bruce and Common said to each other. That's not quite historically accurate, but it, it maybe was similar to the conversation that they put in the movie type thing. Seeing it then between Robert the Bruce and Edward, that that couldn't have happened. I don't think that. I don't even think Edward the Second was there. Um, but yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of any, any other real gross. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'm just forgetting off the top of my head. There was, there was probably other things I can't, I can't really remember. Um, 
but yeah, any, anything else you think is historically inaccurate in the comments below. Uh, if you disagree with anything I, say is, uh, anything I said as well, please let me know in the comments below. It's always good to get your feedback. Going forward as well, I kind of want to do more reviews of films. I really like films, TV series. Um, TV series, obviously, you need to like watch a lot. So if I've not seen it, it might be harder to do. But certainly movies, um, I want to review movies more. Um, historical movies, they're quite easy to make these videos as well. You just kind of like put the camera up and watch a movie and then react to it. So it's not the like the most time consuming thing. I seem to pick content that's the most time consuming thing to do, like documentaries and then traveling locations and then you know exploring all these like complex historical features. Um, these are a wee bit easier to make. So I want to make more down the line on top of everything I usually do just kind of introduce this series so if you have movies in mind that you want me to review please let me know in the comments below like I say the only kind of criteria would be it has to be something to do with history or, or something loosely to do with history um, outside of that we're good um, and I'll try and do these just, just when I get a chance um, obviously my wrist I'm hoping it's, going to, hoping it's going to heal in the next month or so um, so I'll be able to drive more and hopefully the next couple of weeks I'll be able to do a wee bit more in general but I thought this was a kind of good good chance to, to make a, a video uh, keep the ball rolling and I always like watching movie reviewers as well, reviewers as well. shout out to Critical Drinker um, he's one of my favourites Scottish as well so you know part in the trip and uh, you know got, got to keep keep the Scottish faith going, especially when we're talking about Robert the Bruce. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like I say, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, whether you like this idea of a series or not. Um, and if you've got any movies you want me to review, and obviously we might do some kind of live streams and stuff down the line, um, but it can be a wee bit more, you know, in interactive in the live sense. Um, and yeah, let us know in the, in the comments below any films you want, to want me to review um, coming up in the future. And yeah, Thanks for watching, and um, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, obviously you can support me if you want, um, if you don't want to financially support me, tell your friends and family about the channel, um, that would be perfect, and yep, I'll see you next time, cheers.